Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Longtail or Longicotta Boas are one of the coolest locality boas available with a dedicated following of enthusiasts that keep them. One of the really cool things about these Longicotta Boas is they get darker over time until they become really dark as adults like this female here. Today I'm going to show you examples of longtail boas of different ages so you can see how this metamorphosis pro progresses over time. And so I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys lately about the long tail boas. Figured it would be a good idea to take some out just so you can see for yourselves how dark they get at different ages. Before I get into the long tail boas, I just wanted to mention that I'm having a special end of the year sale for boas and all of the baby boas on my Flickr site are now 25% off and I have two really nice litters of long tail boas so if you're looking for a long tail boa you can get one at a discount price from my Flickr site the sale is good through November 20th okay so this is an adult female long tail boa you can see how dark she is and I just really love especially the face markings they have these really cool markings that look almost like war paint uh, as you can see on this female. This is a Russo bloodline female. She had a litter earlier this year over the summer. Um, she's starting to gain weight back but just a beautiful beautiful animal. Look how dark she is. Uh, not quite pure black but lots of rich dark black colors. Lots of kind of a um, caramelly color I would call it and kind of some dark browns as well. Look at the speckling on the belly. Just a really cool type of boa to work with. These guys don't get that big. They get to about six feet long, so I'd call them maybe like a mid-size or semi-dwarf boa. Really easy to keep, and a lot of uh, boa enthusiasts keep nothing but these long tail boas. So um, you can see this is what the end stage looks like when the long tail boas reach their full level of darkness. This female is, I think she's about eight years old, but uh, she's probably not going to get any darker than this. Next, another example of an adult Longicotta that has reached its full darkness. This is my other adult female from the Bisset bloodline. She also had a litter earlier this year, but you can see just how beautiful she is. About the same level of darkness, I'd say, as the Russo one, maybe a little bit darker. But uh, that beautiful war paint on her face and the beautiful speckling on the belly. And so this female had a litter, I think it was around 23 babies, good sized litter earlier this year. It was, I think her second litter, maybe even her third litter. But she's about uh, eight or nine years old. I think she's a year older than the female I just showed you. And uh, she's about the same size. And the males are about the same size too. Maybe a little bit smaller. One thing about these animals is that uh, in general they're not quite as thick or stout as the true red tails. They're actually classified as a subspecies of boa imperator, although they're also different from like the Mexican and Central American imperator and Colombian imperator. Definitely a very distinct type of boa and really cool to work with. So this is from the Bisset bloodline. And as I mentioned, I have babies available right now from both of these females. Next, I wanted to show you some sub-adult Longicotta that are undergoing their metamorphosis to the darker color. This is a male from 2021. He's a little over three years old. Actually, this guy's from my first litter from the Bisset bloodline. Uh, that female that I showed you was a 2015 born animal and the other female from the Russo line is a 2016 animal. So this is a 2021 born animal and he's getting pretty dark. He's pretty close to his uh, full darkness. A little bit more tan and caramel color showing through but pretty dark overall. And you can see this guy has this really nice kind of oval pattern of the tan between his dark saddles. He's actually in shed now. And I, I'd say this guy's about four feet long or so. Kind of a cool size, you know, these animals, they don't get too big. And uh, this guy, I would say you would probably be ready for breeding, maybe a year, probably two years actually. Uh, 
well, we'll see. But uh, another nice animal from the Bissett bloodline, a three-year-old sub-adult. This is a female from that same litter from 2021. You can see she looks a little bit different. She's quite a bit lighter, actually, more of the yellowish caramel colors, which actually I, I kind of like that yellowish caramel color. And it just varies. Some of them don't get quite as dark. They have more of the yellowish color uh, than others. And some of them have kind of more of an aberrant pattern. These guys have kind of more of a regular pattern. But they're all a little bit different, which, you know, makes them really cool. You know, everyone is an individual. But this female is, uh, I'd say she's two years away from breeding. She's about the same size as the male, but doing really well. And a nice example of a long tail boa from the Bissette bloodline. Next, I want to show you some younger sub-adults. These are from 2022, so they're now a little over two years old. These are from my Russo bloodline. And as you can see, here's the female. And she's quite a bit lighter. You see well, quite a bit more yellowish coloration. Looking at her belly, it's not nearly as speckled as the adults. They get that speckling as they get older. But definitely, you can see she's starting to show the dark colors and starting to get the war paint on her face. And this animal, I think, is also like the female I showed you from the the set litter, this one, it's going to retain more of the yellow coloration, kind of the caramel coloration. I've even seen some adult ones that have more of that yellowish caramel coloration. And actually, I really like it. I like the, it when they get really dark. But I also like it when they retain that caramel coloration because it contrasts so beautifully against the inky black saddles and the inky black face markings. Just really cool looking animals. And so... These guys, a lot of people refer to them as yellow longicata because the um, the caramel yellowish coloration between the saddles. And there's also the anerythristic longicata. You know, the anery the true anerys carry the gene for anerythrism, which is recessive. And so, um, you know, they have two copies of the recessive gene. They have the anery, and they look almost like a black and white uh, animal. I don't have any adults to show you. I have some babies from my litters born this year that look kind of anery, and I'm pretty sure they're anery, so maybe I'll show you one of those in a sec. But I like both the anery looking ones and the uh, yellowish looking ones. My babies, I don't actually have them labeled as anery because sometimes it's really confusing, and sometimes they kind of look anery, but I'm not really sure. So I prefer to just leave it up to you, pick the ones you like the most. I'm not gonna, you know, say if it's anery, if I am not 100% sure it's anery. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, some of them have a little bit of reddish in their tail. I've even seen adults that have a little bit of reddish. There was one that um, a breeder had like 10 or 15 years ago, and it was like pure black and white, and then it had like a red tail. And I was really uh, drooling over pictures of that bow. I don't know what happened to it. I would have loved to add it to my collection. Um, but a really cool looking animal. This is a, an example, two-year-old Longicata from the Russo bloodline starting to show the darkening. One more 2022 holdback, you know, this guy's about uh, two years and a few months old. And this guy's the male, another cool looking animal, not quite as much yellow. This guy, I think he's gonna be darker than the female I just showed you. But why? the reason I held him back is this cool tail stripe, see that? He's got this area that occupies, I don't know, six inches or so of his body now. That's uh, just basically a stripe. And that I thought was really cool. I'm always looking for boas to hold back that look a little bit different. Maybe can add some variability into the project and cool looks for the next generation. But this guy's doing great. About the same size as the female. And his belly looks like it's not quite as uh, speckled. You know, when they're born, they have kind of a light belly and it gets darker over time. But these Longi, as far as husbandry, they're super easy to keep. They always eat no problem, even as babies. Just a great animal to work with. And I can't recommend them too much if you're looking for a really neat locality boa to work with as a breeder or just as a pet. So now that we've seen some adults and sub-adults, we're on to the babies. And these are some examples of 2024 born 
on Jakarta that are just a few months old. So this first one is from my Russo bloodline. It's kind of a really cool animal. First thing you'll notice is just how tiny these guys are. They're probably my smallest, certainly one of my smallest baby boas. They're even smaller than like the Tarahumara and Kral Key when they're born. This guy actually, he's put on a few inches, but you can see how tiny he still is. And this guy, I venture, is an anerythristic. And a little more about the anerythristics. When I got my Russo pair, they were advertised as het for anery. And uh, my first litter that I had from that pairing, I didn't see any obvious anneries. There might have been some in there. But as I said, it's uh, sometimes it's kind of ambiguous to tell and kind of hard to tell. So I uh, didn't label them as anerythristic. This guy I would venture is, he's kind of got more of that black and white look. Even the anneries will have a little bit of the reddish coloration, but uh, again, that's why I don't say it's defi definitely anery. I say it's probably anery, or I leave it up to you guys to judge. And what else is cool about this one is he, you can see he's got this patternless area. The, the front you know, quarter or so of his body has reduced or absent saddles, so. Cool looking animal. He's kind of got thinner saddles overall. But uh, an example of a baby Longicata. He'll get quite a bit darker, obviously. He'll look more like the animals I just showed you when he gets older. But this is kind of how they start off. It's not what they end up looking like when they're adults. One more 2024 born baby. This is from my Blissette bloodline. You can see this is not an anerythristic animal. There's quite a bit more reddish coloration. The saddles are kind of this reddish brown color. And you can see definitely a different appearance than the adults. Much more of that you know, lighter coloration in between the saddles. And you can see overall much cleaner. Doesn't have like lots of speckling and black flecks. You can see the belly is much cleaner overall. And the coloration does come in gradually. So pretty much every time that these boas shed, they're a little bit darker. They start out with these little kind of dots of dark pigment, and it gets bigger and bigger with every shed. What's really cool about these guys is they're a natural type of boa that basically is the same as a morph that's known as IMG or increasing melanin gene. And if you're familiar with the IMG gene, it's really cool because the animals start out at light as babies and they get darker and darker until they're much darker as adults, some of them almost pure black. And that seems to be the similar type of thing going on naturally with these Longicatas. So definitely a really cool boa to work with. And as I mentioned, I've got babies available now from both of these litters. I've got, you can even have pairs if you're looking to set up a Longicata breeding group. There's lots of nut great boas for you. If you're looking for a pet, I even have some animals that were born with a slight kinking of the tail. And I have these ones with the kink tail priced at a special discount, half of the price of regular. And they're now 25% off the regular price anyway. So if you're looking for a boa, but you don't have that much money, these Longicata make great pets. They're relatively inexpensive. The ones with the kink tails are half the price and they're all 25% off right now. So never a better time to add some Longicata to your collection. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the babies at my Flickr page. The link is below the video description. Shoot me any questions you might have and enjoy your boas.